a red light or <laughs> green light. <laughs> red light. Red, red light. light. Why does she got such long hair? I don't know. Nope, it still has to be moving. You're gonna die right here. Oh uh, yeah, I think I'm dead. You're. F <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was, was gonna say anyway. I'm pretty sure it has to be moving in a rhythm. Took us a while, didn't it? Yep, about an hour. No, <laughs> I mean, no, around. not just that. Oh, and reacting yeah. to this. Oh, yep. <laughs> game theory, like this game theory has been out for months. She Oops. was talking about us actually getting started recording this video. Because <laughs> I distracted her when I showed her Battlefield Vegas on the Martin Cito pants yeah, video. Yeah, and then it all went down. Then and I just distracted there. her just... with showing her a chinchilla. Yep. yep. We had to watch chinchilla videos, and we had to watch <laughs> Battlefield... What's that place called? Battlefield, Battlefield, Battlefield Vegas, Vegas videos. <laughs> and I had to plan out Kathan's 21st birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, don't worry. He doesn't watch our videos. So yeah. We have nothing to worry about. Exactly. So, so it, if you guys are ever interested, you should go. Because you can rent a tank for $2,500 and, you can run and over crush a car. A car. It's one of the <laughs> best things I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I have $2,500 fucking dollars to just spend on doing that. Eh. You, not with that well, attitude. Well... I mean, Nothing you planning sweet. on paying me an extra twenty five hundred dollar bonus for the No, or so are you planning on streaming time? again and and pulling an in income that way? Not because the in the near future. Because the whole deal was, man. I mean, the money you make off of streams is yours a hundred percent. Yeah, but I've never made close to twenty five hundred dollars. on You streams. could save up, <laughs> but you could save up. It's easy, man. I mean, just like, there's opportunities for you to make in yeah you know, extra income on the side. You just it, it's yeah. just. I, I, I mean, hell, that's like me. Like I said, and, too, if I have twenty five hundred dollars, I'm putting it towards my debt. So. Which is the smart decision. I'm not going <laughs> to pretend that that's not a smart. I can't decision. say that I'm very smart. But <laughs> it's a but fucking, it's a fucking tank, tank. Yeah, running over a fucking Yolo. car. <laughs> How many times <laughs> in my life am I going to get to do that? Jake would be all for many it. Times no, I know Jake would be all for it. You know what? Hey, five hundred dollars. Tell you what. Tell you what. Let's all do a deal. Let's all of us, you, Kathan, me, I gotta do Nick, it. I'm and Jacob, doing it. I'm fucking and Jacob, doing it. I'll fly out there. Twenty thousand. We each put up. We each put up. We each put up five hundred dollars. No, we, and, be, we, and we I think and we and we rock paper scissors for it. Oh fuck no! I ain't doing that shit. Uh oh, I ain't oh, paying for somebody else. To, why? Bad deal. Come on. Rock, paper, scissors, my ass. You only got three options and there's four people. <laughs> so. I'm just saying. I mean, damn it. It's it like it's something. <laughs> it's better than nothing. I ain't paying Russian roulette with 2500 Nope. No, I'm going to yeah, pay like, my way. Okay. Five grand. Lord, woman. <laughs> you ain't got five grand? Yes, I do. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. In spite of everything that we've discussed and talked about and all that, <laughs> we have, like... Again, yeah. how long is this intro? Oh, Not nearly as long as the other No, no <laughs> trust me, this is nothing. But Game Theory did a, uh, yeah, did a video on Poppy's Playtime Chapter 3 when the trailer <clears throat> dropped. And, oh, yeah. Oh, this is when the trailer... Oh. Yeah, this has been a while. Yeah, so, we were supposed to watch this a while back. Yeah, exactly. Oops. Sorry, guys. Actually, I actually could have swear that we already did. No. Nope. We did not. I can 100% guarantee that because I went and looked back at all of our previous Game Theory videos, and this one is not there. Must have just been the teaser, not the trailer, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's what I think happened. We watched yeah, the teaser. Yeah, we watched the teaser. So, might as well just hop right back into it, and then also there's something else we're probably going to react to right after this. It's, a, it's another, it's a short one that I'm probably going to release both of these back to back. Okay. So uh, yeah. Anyway, we Let's have a game theory, Poppy Playtime, Chapter Three. Don't breathe. Don't. <gasps> there is 
nothing more gratifying to my soul than being the reason for a theorist's smile. To be the one that inspires creativity and critical thinking. That is why it is with enormous pleasure that I am announcing a new theory. A theory based on the Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 teaser trailer. Because while this trailer may seem vague and unspecific, it reveals even more of the horrific experiments that went on inside Playtime Co. May this theory terrify and disturb every theorist that chooses to click. <laughs> Hmm. That was a good little intro. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that encourages you to wake up and smell the poppies. And I mean that quite literally, friends, because today we're diving nose first back into the world of Poppy Playtime, which has been suspiciously quiet since the release of Chapter 2 back in May. Then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we got ourselves this little surprise last week. A teaser trailer for Chapter 3 coming out, according to the well, video, sometime next year. And let me tell you, friends, if you haven't seen this teaser yet, it gets dark. It starts off with a slow panning shot of the toys that we've already defeated. Huggy Wuggy lying on the ground, Mommy Long Legs ripped into, Bron the dinosaur's head for some reason. All while we listen to Elliot Ludwig, founder of Playtime Co. giving an announcement about Playcare, the adoption initiative that Playtime Co. is starting. He states that Playtime owes everything to these children, and then the trailer ends as the camera moves up to reveal a creepy looking gas mask. All while the sounds of audience applause mix with the horrifying cries of children. Yay, this is a video game that's going to be played by kids. Clearly, they went hard for this one. The Chapter 2 teaser was creepy. Child singing Itsy Bitsy Spider in a minor key. Classic horror trope. But there's something about the sound of screaming children that just hits different. And that's coming from a guy who talks about dead kids way more regularly than a person probably should. Okay. Oh, <laughs> screams is the thing we're really looking for. Wrong. The for a few episodes now, we've suspected that Playtime Co. used children to make these living, breathing, bleeding toys. And now, having the founder of the company outright say, we owe everything to these children, well, I'm thinking he means that literally. But there's a lot more in here than just hints Damn. to past theories. I suspect that there's enough in this single minute of content to get a sense of most of what Chapter 3 is going to reveal to us. From the next big bad toy we're going to face to perhaps the most disturbing lore drop to happen yet. So let's take another slide down into the depths of Elliot Ludwig's monster factory, shall we? Probably the best place to start off is by addressing the severed dinosaur head in the room. In my live reaction to the teaser over on GT Live, where you'll notice I'm wearing some stellar new theory wear, by the way. Link for that's down below this video if you're interested in that nice long-sleeved like, t-shirt. Like or, you know, your... maybe an awesome new futuristic backpack or shoulder bag right in time for the new school year. Let me tell you, they're the perfect size for any killer toys you might want to cram in there. Or, you know, maybe just a pack of our new clickbait green playing cards. I promise they won't come to life and chase you through the ventilation system. Anyway, wh where was I? Again? Th sorry, merch push got me all confused. Oh, oh yeah, in my reaction, and. seeing Braun the dinosaur here immediately set off some theory alarms. Is that the dinosaur? What is that, Braun? Braun the di- Braun? Braun the dinosaur? His appearance here seems very intentional. The trailer begins by panning up from the remains of our first two bosses, and then we land on him, implying that he then is gonna be our chapter three big bad. This feels especially true when you consider that the rest of the less important characters from past chapters like Pugapillar and Bunzo appear behind the gas mask at the end of the trailer. If we're to believe this motif that they're setting up here, right, it seems to be indicating that chapter one boss, Huggy, chapter two, Poppy, chapter three, then is Braun going to be the boss or kind of like the big bad of chapter three. It's also worth pointing out that the gas mask at the end of the teaser is red and yellow, exactly like Braun the dinosaur's color palette. No other Ooh. toy we've been introduced yeah. to at this point matches that coloring, so it does seem like an odd coincidence. Like, again, it's purposefully trying to hint at Braun's importance in this upcoming chapter. Ooh. That's a potential possibility, yeah. but also this could be a big misdirect. <coughs> and people would see those color patterns and just be like, oh, it's going to be Braun. And watch them do like a thing at the beginning. You just see Braun. He's like, hi there. Don't worry. I'll keep you safe forever and ever and ever. And then all of a sudden he just gets, all of a sudden the screen, like hit, it's, he's like doing this on a screen. All of a sudden the screen goes black and then it's someone else entirely. He's just like, <laughs> I always Psych. love that. It's like, <laughs> I always love that dinosaur. Uh, his screams always make his screams just filled me with such joy especially when they stopped mm. oh hi there oh yeah don't worry about it uh <laughs> uh yeah you can leave whenever you want you know if you can find the exit 
you know, that's uh, just up to you and uh, your ability to uh, navigate through uh, the little maze that I've made for you. So, uh, yeah, enjoy and have fun. I'll see you later. <laughs> I was thinking something a lot more simple, like Brawn comes out from the shadows and, like, you know, you're just like, oh, shit. And then he's like, hey, what are you doing here? You're in grave danger. You have to get out of here right now. And all of a sudden, just like, shing! And he's like, his head goes flying because it was his head. lands on the fucking ground in front of you, like, all bloody, and he falls over. And this guy, like, with the gas mask on, is just... Just kind of descends from, like, the rafters or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. And he's got, like... Oh, dude, imagine him, like, having a giant, like, blade or something like that. Sort of like a... I'm not going to say pyramid head level. You know, like, big fuck-all blade. But you guys are forgetting the, the big thing that absorbed Mommy Longman. That's, well... I think yeah, that's we're the... thinking that's going to be like final chapter. Yeah, um, and I think final that, chapter boss. I think that they've said that they are at least planning to do five chapters of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So I think, I think this is going to be like the overseer of the orphanage. Like mm. he's going to be the one. Like this character is going to be the one who's like the head of the orphanage. And because there's no more kids in the orphanage, he has no more objectives, and thus basically he's a rogue AI. Oh, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Okay. But. I'm thinking bronze head is a symbolism that bronze like dead like either dead or is going to die in the next episode. I guess we'll see. Maybe bronze going to try and help us over and over again and then at the very end his head gets chopped off and that fits like what happens in the trailer. And his head becomes part of the person. Oh yeah, that could be the thing. Just like the thing comes out from the shadows again and just drags bronze head. Like, oh. Mm. And then you have yourself the cardboard cutouts. Throughout chapter 2, you find these cardboard cutouts of the various characters from Playtime Co. scattered throughout the map. If you push the buttons multiple times, they say various phrases. Some of them harmless. Do you want to play with PJ? Some of them disturbing. You need to get out of here. <laughs> Just kidding! Go have fun! <laughs> and if you keep on pressing, most of them end up as a glitchy mess. <laughs> Now, I gotta be honest, when yeah. I first saw these things, I really wanted to do a theory just on... The one that we the one that we kept doing was the robot. Yeah. And we're just like, he's like, please play with me. The button causes me pain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll stop. I kind of felt bad for him. Me too. He like, was so cute. He was. There's a lot of cute characters in this. Yeah on these cardboard cutouts, expecting there to be some sort of hidden lore inside the glitchy audio. Like, it is the perfect place to hide lore. The perfect place to hide some lore. Mob games, wink wink, nudge nudge, I tried pitch shifting, reversing the audio, spectrograms, basically everything I could think of. You know what I got? Nothing. Maybe there'll be something that happens in chapter three. Who knows, mob games? But that doesn't necessarily mean that they were totally (laughs) useless, because Braun does actually give us some interesting information. pressing his cutout button once, we get a setup for a joke. What do you call a dino with one eye? And then pressing it again, we get the punchline. Uh, do you think he saw us? <laughs> Slow clap there, Bron. Slow clap. That is the type of humor that's kept me alive on YouTube for the past decade. <laughs> However, <laughs> pressing the button and you get this. What do you call the scariest dinosaur? Me. Braun is outright telling us that he's a scary dinosaur. The other toy cutouts, even the ones that do try to kill us within this very chapter, aren't nearly that overt. Some of them have ominous lines, but none of them are outright warning us about how scary they can be. In short, all the signs are pointing at Braun being the toy that we're gonna face next, which is why I don't believe it. I suspect that this might be a big misdirect on the part of Mom. Ah, there you go, I think it's theory bait. It's meant to get little theorist fishies like me interested in the hook, and then I get lured in and served up on a platter. You see, this isn't the first time that we've had Braun shoved into the spotlight only to be relegated as a mere background character when the chapter ultimately comes out. All the way back in the first trailer for Poppy Playtime, there's this wonderful shot of a giant toy Braun whose head suddenly turns around on its own and reveals its cold, dead eyes. And then the chapter came out and he was a poster. Cool, cool, cool. He reappears in chapter two, but again, he's nothing more than just a prop in a puzzle sequence. And from a business perspective too, it just doesn't make sense for Braun to star in chapter three. Mob games have had such success in creating new big 
scary villains like Huggy and Mommy, the third chapter just going back to a character that's existed since the beginning, it loses a lot of the hype of a big teaser reveal. And they not only lose hype, but also a good merchandising <laughs> opportunity. People have loved Brawn, Catby, and all the other toys since chapter one. New chapters means the opportunity for new characters, which means more new merch. And the last thing about this is that Mob Games' strength really seems to be flexible characters. Things that bend, feel softer, or rubbery. I mean, Kissy Missy trying to pull this switch in the middle of chapter two, not only is it hilarious, <laughs> but it also just shows the strength of the team's animation of softer, stuffed characters. It is a huge and welcome departure from the monster designs of a certain other indie franchise that's dominated the scene for the past eight years. Ron is hard, he's heavy, he's robotic. Again, pushing away from the monster aesthetic that's worked so well for Poppy Playtime up to this point. So call it a hunch from the past decade of doing this, but I don't think Braun is going to be our big bad. I think they're going to reveal more about our big bad in October or November as they get closer to next year's release. But hey, that's just a theory. A mini theory that exists within this one larger theory because I am nowhere near done with this teaser. But if I am going to keep going to reveal the big lore drop that I expect is going to happen in Chapter 3, I'm going to need you to do one thing for me right now, and that is click the subscribe button. You guys know I know a lot. I'm already sub, man. I'll go ahead and leave a like about YouTube, Fair. right? Well, here's a little Fair. known fact about how it works. Your clicks on the subscribe button actually wind up a crank over at YouTube headquarters and give the algorithm the power that it needs to play the various videos. So, I'm gonna need you to wind that crank. Bet you can't click the subscribe button before I count down to zero. 59, 58, 50, okay, obviously it was a joke. Thank you for the sub. YouTube is all powered up. Let's get back to the video, shall we? Well, it would certainly be cool to be able to figure out the next monster that we're going up against in chapter three. Considering they all seem to die by the end of the chapter anyway, the more more intriguing part is the underlying lore about Playtime Co. and the experiments that they've been running. We got a lot of hints throughout Chapter 2 that the company was trying to revive dead rats using gel made from poppy flowers, and that now they were looking for quote-unquote larger subjects, aka children. We also saw paperwork where members of the staff were rating children's physical abilities in order to best pair them with the appropriate toy. Enter the setting for this newest chapter, Playcare. As the teaser says, I announce Playcare. Our very own on-site orphanage. Having an on-site orphanage would give them plenty of larger subjects to dip into poppy gel. Kids forgotten by a system. Kids that are untraceable. But then what? What did they do here that led them to becoming the horrifying monsters that we've now come to expect from the franchise? Well, I suspect the answer to that question lies with this teaser. But not in the teaser, rather the thumbnail. You see, the thumbnail obviously puts the gas mask front and center as you'd expect. But there's a detail here that isn't present in the actual video. Surrounding everything is this red mist. It looks cool, and it definitely works nicely Ooh. with the gas mask theme, but as someone who spends way Pop too much time in thumbnail design meetings, popping? I can tell you that or this detail popping? is more than just a it looks cool moment. This detail is intentional. It reveals way more than anything in the teaser itself. It reveals the usage of poppy gas. Ah. I mean, poppies are red flowers, after all, so it just seems to make sense. I do think that the poppy gas, I, th I think that's probably where they're headed with this, right, is making the poppy into a gas that then is converting the kids. Immediately after I filmed this over on GT Live, I jumped on the computer and started looking into the idea of poppy gas. And you know what I found? Nothing. Zilch. Nah. <laughs> turns out nobody is interested in turning an odorless flower into a gas. But then, I remember this Except, moment from uh, the opening you know, second. Opiate addicts. This is true. I'm sure so they the have, uh, you know. They've thought about it. And, and figured it out. <laughs> what if poppy gas was weak? Her hair is sturdy and won't come out when it's you brush it. Opium. And smells just like a poppy flower. Her hair smells like poppy flower, but poppies aren't supposed to have a smell, right? Well, they don't, unless you're talking about a specific type of poppy. Opium poppies. This is actually something that I <laughs> wow. casually tossed out Good there in our first ever theory on poppy playtime. Side note, I looked into and it turns out that poppies don't really have that much of a smell. Unless, of course, you're talking about opium poppies. In which case, you're opening up a whole lot of messed up there. You see, normal poppies don't have a smell and don't have much of a narcotic effect because they have low levels of alkaloids, basically just a naturally occurring compound in the plant. Opium poppies, though, have higher alkaloid levels, resulting in a stronger smell and more physiological effects on humans. What do they do? Well, look no further than the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, we'll put them to sleep. I can't run anymore. 
I'm so sleepy. You can't rest now. We're nearly there. Opium has been used throughout history as a painkiller and sleep inducer thanks to some Love of the chemicals the found within it, namely morphine and codeine, drugs that you might be familiar with because they're still used today as painkillers. Now, obviously, there are more and more regulations on using opiates like these for medical purposes. In fact, my partner Steph, in her former life before YouTube, worked on helping educate doctors about the medical uses and dangers of opiates and opioids. However, that sort of knowledge didn't exist in the early 1900s, and this stuff was totally unregulated. Opium would commonly be mixed with sugar and water to make syrups, balms, and soups, which would then be given to children that couldn't sleep. These balms could then be applied to women's chests to help babies wean faster, or they would be put on babies' gums to soothe them while they were teething. In fact, they were marketed as soothers and could be purchased in pretty much any grocery store at the time. You know, it was just common practice for Must have been a, normal kids to be given. Must have been a hell of a time. Yeah. Damn, imagine that being high off your ass and just being like, you know, like. Hey, could you imagine a baby being high and like going into going to breastfeed and just being like. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a baby is gonna even yeah, make it that far, man. Gonna a baby is gonna be either. like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just and just and just. just, just uh, Baby is gonna be knocked the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, you know why it's not crying about its gums hurting? Because it's passed the fuck out. It's in la la yeah. land for the next four hours at least. Like just a small symbol of opiates. Like <laughs> just a small symbol of opiates in its milk. Don't worry, it'll be fine. It's like and all of a sudden they, their baby grows up to be a be a heroin addict. Like I don't know where it went wrong. <laughs> I think you do. Yeah. And highly addicted I don't think drugs. They make it that At least until regulations either, finally the, uh, came down in night. Oh, the withdrawal symptoms from opiates are no fucking joke. They kill people. Yeah. 12. But as disturbing as that may be, it actually connects directly back to Poppy Playtime. Playtime Co. using opium poppies in Poppy's hair follows this trend of subduing kids who are in pain or just a bit restless using a drug. It also means that they were probably able to skirt around regulations. Who would suspect a toy company putting opium in a doll's hair? And considering they weren't a medical center, they probably were even less likely to fall into suspicion. But how does all of this relate back to our creepy gas mask and the red fumes surrounding the toys? A gas mask, to me, implies that the gas is covering a large area, and that the gas is more concentrated. In my research, I found this, carfentanil, a narcotic gas that's in the same category as opiates and opioids, which is 10,000 times stronger than morphine, which itself is 100 times stronger than opium. And carfentanil has been weaponized as a gas before. In Russia back in 2002, a group of rebels took a theater of 800 people hostage. Since I already seem to be doing movie references in today's episode, it's basically like this opening scene from Tenet. After three long days, the Russian authorities were suddenly faced with a difficult choice of how to possibly end the standoff. They decided to use a carfentanil-based gas to knock out the rebels, thereby allowing the troops to get into the building safely. Except there was one problem with the plan. Carfentanil is too strong. Yeah, they yeah, killed stuff everybody is in the fucking times building, stronger than morphine. They? Well, sure, the carfentanil did indeed knock out the insurgents so the authorities could get in. It also killed 130 of the God hostages damn, who are also dude. in the building breathing mm. the stuff in. The gas fills your lungs, replacing the oxygen that you should be breathing in. In, meaning that no oxygen is getting into your bloodstream, but instead this deadly chemical, eventually yeah, causing your body to shut opiates. down. Which then brings us all the way back around mm -hmm. to playtime. Not to mention, oh, like, that, that would absolutely destroy your liver. Yes. Like, even if you could still breathe, that would destroy your liver. Like, you would have every symptom of an insane opiate overdose from breathing that in. Also, you know, it's called carfentanil. Uh... What's one of the more, like, deadly drugs that's on the streets right now? Fentanyl. Yeah, fentanyl. Yeah. So, the more, like, and it's much more dangerous than all the other stuff that's been mentioned combined. Poppy flowers and rats. The experiment- Oh, dang it. Jesus. What the does. fuck, man? <laughs> it's this stupid program on here. Every now and again, it just... Every now and again, it just fucking Chapter yells two at shows that Elliot reason. and his team yeah. killed a rat and submerged it into a poppy flower gel mixture before trying to revive it. The process didn't work, which they figured was because of the size of the test subject. But what if it was more than that? What if part of the problem was that it was only coated in a poppy gel mixture? I mean, I could go swimming for hours, but I can't then claim that I'm suddenly hydrated. The water's only effective once it's inside of my body. I'm wondering if 
that's actually what we're seeing here. Puppy gel didn't work, but what if you breathed in puppy gas? Suddenly, you'd have it in your system immediately as the lungs transfer the gas into the bloodstream. If Playtime Co. is trying to activate the elements of the poppy, it being in the body, in the blood that's keeping people alive, well, it feels like that's gonna get you more consistent results when trying to revive someone. Making it a gas would also make the experimentation process easier. Could you imagine having to submerge one child into a gel mixture and then having to fish him out before putting the next one in? Putting a child in a room filled with gas, however, is a way easier way to do it and far less messy. And yes, at this point, I think I need to make the obvious disclaimer here. This is dark. Very dark. I think we can all very easily see the parallels to World War II gas chambers. But the reason that I'm talking about these very disturbing things and these very tragic events is because it seems like this is where the game's headed to with the upcoming third chapter. This is a toy factory after all. Mass production is their name of the game. Around the factory, we see dozens of broken and bloody cat bees, bronze, boogie bots, and candy cats. These weren't special one-offs like Mommy Long Legs or a giant Huggy. These were everyday toys that were being sold out to the masses. So there are lots of bloody candy cats laying around the factory, and we've seen children assigned to that specific toy, then it stands to reason that you need a lot of kids ready to be converted. The gas allows you to get a big group of children together in one room, drug them all at once, and then walk in with your colorful gas mask and remove them all ready for mass production. However, I don't think they're just shoving kids into a room to be converted. They're using the entire play care facility, and I believe that to be the case because of the main focus of the teaser, the mask. This gas mask is not just the same color as brawn, it's the same color as real-life gas masks that were created during World War II. While most masks were neutral colors like black, brown, gray, or green, those colors made the gas masks look unappealing and scary, especially to children. You can imagine why. I am my mommy. In walked <laughs> Walt Disney. Yep, that Walt Disney, believe it or not. He decided to help the issue out by manufacturing the Mickey Mouse mask, which had the face of the iconic mouse to make that, it more appealing to kids. In the UK, they shit, also I'm have sure. the Mickey Mouse mask, but it that didn't look terrifying. like anything coming out of the old house of mouse. Instead, these masks were bright red, and that was it, just red. Sometimes they had a flappy nose to make them seem more fun, but overall, it was just about making the colors bright so they were less scary. And remind me again what color the mask in the teaser is. These masks are bright and colorful because they're being worn around children, all in an effort to make them and the scientists that wear them less scary, which of course they have to do so they don't get high off the fumes that are being pumped into play care. If these gas masks were only necessary while kids were being shoved into a testing room to be transferred into a toy, then they could have just had them as a standard black color. No kids would be conscious enough to see them being worn. It makes a lot more sense that they're this color though, because the children are seeing them being worn regularly, which you'd have to do if the entire play care facility was slowly being gassed. And then all we're left with is a bunch of screaming children. Chapter 3 of Poppy Playtime promises to lean heavy into the twisted backstory of the factory. I'm just not sure any of us realized how dark they were willing to go with this story. Thanks to this new teaser, I think we have an idea. Now the question is, are we going to be brave enough to keep going? But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Here's a quick reminder that new Theoryware merch is available right now. While we might not have ourselves Game Theory branded gas masks <laughs> yet, we do have ourselves switch cases, pencil cases, and suitcases. One of those is a lie. I'll let you guess which one. And while Playtime Co. seems to be going all in on red and yellow, Game Theory's latest tech tee is green and black and blue all over. Dear viewer, I understand. You cannot feel this shirt for yourself. feel a vision is not yet a thing that's been built into the product of YouTube. They had to prioritize YouTube shorts first, but if you could just feel this thing, you too would want to wear it every day, like apparently I have, <laughs> every single day I've been filming lately. And yes, uh, that one right there is me with one sock on. No, I will not be taking any further questions. Want something warmer as we quickly approach the fall? Check out the Space Racer Quilted Jacket. This thing is like wearing a blanket, but it's fashionable and cozier. And while you're at it, why not complete the look with a brand new back Pack. I mean, you can see what the chalk mark says above my head. Much wow. Need I say more? Seriously, this thing has a ton of room and so many compartments for your research papers, your toys, the memories of what you did to all those kids a decade ago. So, if you want to get your hands on any of these items before they disappear faster than an employee in an indie horror game, head on over to theoryware.com. That's theoryware.com, or just click the link in the top line of the description. And as always, remember, friends, it's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs> so, yeah. That was... Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, I, I mean, we we... We kind of saw some stuff coming.
you know, the mislead with Braun, the opium flowers and all that. It's just, damn. Yeah, you literally, like, every time you'd pause, you'd talk about something, and then he'd go then right he'd into that. It. Yeah. It's, like, it's, almost like, it's almost like we were leading Matt Pat. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like we were, we thought before he did. No, we didn't. No. No. The, these videos have been out quite some time. Mm. So, yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this damn, this damn game series. I know that whenever part three comes out, it's going to be like an immediate, like, okay, we're doing this now. Mm -hmm. And we're going to prioritize releasing it because, I mean, this is just, just how it's, I, how it's going to be. But yeah, I I honestly I'm I'm ready for it. I'm super ready for uh, for chapter three. And have they announced anything else? Not yet. Oh, not not really anything yet. But yeah, this was a <laughs> this is a pretty good breakdown, and I'm I can't wait to see what what else Matt you know talks about in the future whenever the next lore drop happens with uh, Poppy Playtime chapter three. But, what's up, Nick? I was just curious about something. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah. This is one of the things that might be causing them problems in delaying Chapter 3. Is they have mixed reviews on Steam uh, for all time right now. 68% of 6,200. It's because of the bullshit with NFTs. No, it's actually because they uh, made Chapter 1 free when they released Chapter 2. And they previously made people pay for Chapter 1. And so people are convinced that when they release Chapter 3, they'll make Chapter 2 free. And people feel like that's ripping them off. Oh. Because they're like, well, why pay for a game that you can just wait and get for free whenever they release the next chapter, you know? Mm. And uh, I have a feeling they're shooting themselves in the foot by not going ahead and making chapter 2 free before releasing chapter 3 or something I don't know I mean if they do make chapter 2 free it'll be okay I mean or at the very least like the people were mad because they're charging like $10 for chapter 2 and they only charge like $5 for chapter 1 which chapter 2 is like 3 times the length of chapter 1 from what I've seen but yeah yeah, I don't know. But people are upset about all that stuff, basically. And it might be hurting their ability to continue because they might not have a lot of money right now. I, I don't know. All I do know is that Mob is... Mob, mob Games, uh, they... They're very... Like, they're very new on the scene in terms of... Of uh, their... Their video gaming and all that. Or their video game releases and all that because... Yeah, I, I give them the benefit of the doubt and hopefully they learn from their mistakes and they don't do dumb shit like that again. But we'll see. All in due time. So, yeah. Poppy uh, uh, Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, whenever it releases, y'all can expect a video from us on our gaming channel at least because I, I know that there's a lot of people out there who will just be like, react to, a, to the game theory talking about Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 whenever it comes out. And we're just going to be like, pump your brakes. We got to play it. We're, like, yeah. we're going to play it ourselves. Because <laughs> I want to enjoy it. I want to have fun with it. And I want this I want this young lady to get scared out of her wits. Because, you know. The first two, jeez. The first, first one in general, gone. That one was terrifying. That was pretty bad, wasn't it? Yep. Hopefully we'll get some good scares out of that one whenever it comes. But <laughs> let's play games. You've had said. a long, long break between that and the next stuff that's coming out. Oh yeah, I think next after Alan you're like, Wake, that was terrifying, and I'm like, that was a casual walk in the park. Yes, compared to some of the shit that's coming up on this list. I, next one <laughs> is pretty scary, and Nick's going to be playing it. What comes after Alan Wake again? Um, Until Dawn. Oh, okay. and you're going to be playing it. Yeah, it's still not that scary when I've seen it. Nah, not as scary, but it... Scarier it, than what we've been doing. Yeah, it, it's like the next step. Provisionally, provisionally, we're getting scarier and scarier as we go along. Don't worry, Kate. You're going to survive this. That Dead Space remix is going to be something else I've been Ooh. And I'm going to be playing the Callisto Protocol by myself 
and judging for myself where it belongs. Shame. Maybe has... play it in my room in the dark. <laughs> I'll probably, I'm going to play it down here. Probably not in the dark, but I will play it down here on the gaming channel. So if y'all want to uh, check that out, feel free. I'll be on the Discord playing it, so feel free to join the Discord and watch me share my screen if I'm in uh, public chats. Uh, but, alright. That's going to do it, everybody. This was Game Theory, uh, Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. If y'all enjoyed and you want to see more from Game Theorists, hit their name in the title of the video. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to, you know, do all that fun jazz. And until next time, Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. And y'all take care. Peace out. See ya.